Welcome to another movie plot. It opens in 1863 with Confederate soldiers transporting a wagon of gold. A lone highwayman blocks the route and attempts to have them hand over the payload. But when that doesn't work he produces automatic weapons and mows down all five with a single burst. Over a hundred years later in Washington DC, the government gets together to discuss the newly developed time travel technology. Agent Spoda requests that he be given the funding to start the Time Enforcement Commission to combat the misuse of such a powerful ability, by detecting ripples in time and sending agents to the past to stop them from happening before they reach the present. Spoda's discovered that the gold stolen in 1863 has been found in modern day being used to purchase weapons, so Senator Utley agrees to fund the operation and give Senator Macomb oversight of the program. Meanwhile at a nearby mall, the off-duty police officer Max is spending time with his wife Melissa. He can't help but spot a purse snatcher and stops the thief by making him read the branding of his boot, before handing the purse back and apologizing to the kind lady. The couple discuss Max's recent offer to work for the TEC while having their photo taken together, and notice a group of strange men following them but think nothing of it when they disappear. That night at their large house in the suburbs, Melissa tells Max she needs to tell him something but they're interrupted by a request for Max to come into work. He promises they'll talk when he returns home but the moment Max exits he's jumped by the same men from the mall. They beat him to a pulp on the front lawn and put a bullet in his chest while making Melissa watch through a window, but having already put his bulletproof vest on for work Max survives the attack, only to witness Melissa killed in an explosion that destroys his home. Ten years later in a trip back to 1929, a man has just jumped to his death having lost everything during the Wall Street crash. A seemingly lucky stockbroker enters his office as one of the only people in town who's landed on top. Atwood pulls out a modern-day music player and begins looking for more ways to take advantage of the stock market, when Max enters through a time rift now a 10-year veteran of the Time Enforcement Commission. Agent Atwood once worked with Max but betrayed the company and now has bodyguards protecting him with stances decades out of date. A second guard puts up more of a fight to showcase some of Max's abilities but is ultimately violated with a billy club. Atwood opens fire on his former partner with another modern weapon but Max takes cover until it runs out. With no other choice the terrified stockbroker reveals that he's stealing money to fund Senator Macomb's presidential campaign, when the crooked politician threatened to murder Atwood's entire ancestry. To keep from speaking he tries to leap out a window but Max follows him and opens a rift back to present day. After some convincing Atwood finally agrees to go against Macomb in front of a jury, but when the time comes he isn't able to do it and is sentenced to execution for his crimes. The TEC send him back to 1929 to continue his jump from the building and be written off as just another sorry victim of Wall Street. Before Max is able to tell Commander Machuzak the report, Spoda shows up with Macomb and other senators wanting to inspect the program. They congratulate Max for his recent mission implying that Macomb's already aware that he's onto him, but with Atwood being dead the agent has no evidence and must listen to the senator arrogantly gloat. During their meeting they explained to the suits that coming into contact with yourself in the past could be catastrophic, and Macomb hints at his plan of shutting down the TEC and preventing time travel full stop, which will give only him and no one else free reign over history. When he leaves Macomb takes his car into the city and expresses his anger that Max has already cost him $50 million. He's become desperate in his desire to fund his election and orders his aide to assassinate Max who he sees as his biggest problem. That night the target goes home to his small apartment and watches recordings of Melissa while drowning in a bottle. In the morning Macomb's aide breaks in and attempts to kill Max with a taser, and brings along with him a knife-wielding assassin who puts up a decent fight. Max is able to use his martial arts to defeat the primary attacker when a misfire from the aide kills his own man. With water leaking onto the floor and the intruder unaware that he's standing in it, a flexible Max evades another shot from the hitman who violently electrocutes himself. After throwing his body into the stairway Max meets internal affairs agent Sarah, who's been tasked with following him around during his day-to-day. -day. At the office Machuzak informs Max that officials don't trust him anymore and has allowed Sarah to accompany him back to 1994, to investigate a pending ripple that the degenerate IT technician Ricky's located. The two suit up and Sarah begins to get nervous about the trip having never used the machine before. To make things worse, when it's about to launch them into the past Max points out two blood spots on the wall ahead of them as previous agents. The two are slung through a rift and are dropped into a pond just outside of DC 10 years ago. Sarah reveals that internal affairs suspect that Max went after Atwood personally as a revenge killing, and asks if Max ever tried to travel back in time and save his wife from dying. Max ignores her and the two find a business owned by Macomb at the center of the unusual time rifts. They split up and find a young version of Macomb discussing business with his partner, when the older Macomb suddenly arrives from present day to prevent himself from making a stupid decision. 
He warns his confused younger self not to sell his shares in the company, and not to touch him as the same matter can't occupy the same space. Just then Max reveals himself and arrests the entire room with Macomb caught dead to rights, but Sarah double-crosses him as she's on the senator's payroll believing him to be the future president. Macomb kills his partner and attempts to kill Max but he manages to knock the gun away, and begins to fight his way out of the warehouse through the half a dozen henchmen. He takes his weapon back from one goon and uses it to kill another, then begins a destructive shootout with the final guard destroying the entire building. During this Macomb has a scar appear across his face when his younger more cowardly self takes a strike to the cheek. The final henchman's brought down when a damaged cryo tank freezes his arm allowing the agent to shatter his torso. With him falling to his death, Max is able to confront Macomb but Sarah distracts him long enough for the senator to draw his gun. He shoots Sarah for failing him but misses his shots at Max before fleeing to the present, which Max is forced to abandon Sarah to do in pursuit of Macomb through time. Upon returning he finds that things have changed, as Macomb's now leading the votes for presidency and Ricky's now a well-dressed employee. They discover that all records of Sarah have been erased from the computers, so Max is accompanied by Machuzak to check if she's alive. They hijack the original prototype that Macomb's been using for his off-record trips to the past, and with the help of the commander who sacrifices himself to activate the machine, Max escapes capture landing himself on a highway in 1994 barely avoiding a passing truck. He goes to the nearest medical center and finds Sarah recovering from her gunshot and willing to testify against Macomb. She's genuinely remorseful for her betrayal as Max retrieves Sarah's blood sample from the lab to hide any traces of her, when discovering a sample of Melissa's that indicates she was pregnant when killed. A devastated Max returns to Sarah's room and finds that she's been murdered and he's immediately the prime suspect. He notices the henchmen from the shopping mall leaving in the elevator but is unable to catch them, and escapes local police by leaping out of a window. Next he goes to the mall where he locates Melissa and takes her to a back room to hide from the goons, then manages to convince her that he's from the future and to not let his younger self leave for work tonight. We're shown that Macomb has hired the hitman Cole to kill Max in the past before he ever joined the TEC, and that everything's playing out the same way as the beginning but just from a different angle. That night Max gets a call to go to work but this time his older self is hiding downstairs to protect them. Since Melissa learns that tonight she's supposed to die she decides to tell Max that she's pregnant unlike before, as older Max makes his way outside and prevents the sneak attack. When the hitmen outnumber him the powers cut and Max barely escapes them into the shadows. Cole sends one of his men to kill the couple while the other locates the time cop, but is fooled by a shirt on a clothesline and killed with his own shotgun. Lansing makes his way quietly inside and finds Melissa escaping onto the roof in the pouring rain, but young Max attacks him having been hiding in the rafters. After a quick fight Max is able to hurl the goon out of a window and goes to retrieve his wife, but Lansing returns having hung on and throws his target to the floor, when Melissa falls and joins her husband dangling over the large drop from a failing gutter. The bloodied henchman arrogantly laughs as he stomps Max's fingers, when Melissa retrieves his dropped pistol and fills Lansing full of holes herself. Max lowers her down to the ground and climbs up the roof to locate another intruder, but Cole's waiting and empties a clip into what we know's a vest sending Max falling a great height onto his back. As the older Max re-enters the house he's attacked by a fourth man who he easily beats down, but has come with Macomb himself who's taken Melissa hostage. Cole then enters with a time bomb and says that the younger Max is dead, but Macomb reminds the moron that if he were dead then the other one wouldn't be standing before them. Suddenly young Max returns shooting the fourth henchman dead, but is distracted by his older self as Cole uses him as a shield to get close enough to tackle the gun away from him. When his younger self is about to be killed, Max exits the house and gives Cole a swift beating before breaking his neck. Younger remains knocked unconscious while older runs upstairs to find Macomb waiting out the timer on a bomb, that he says will destroy himself and all evidence of their existence. He plans to let his younger self become president and rewrite his death from the past, but the young Macomb appears having been tricked into coming to the house by a fake message from Max. The time cop grabs the young Macomb but Melissa's shot in the scramble, so Max pushes the crooked senator into his older self causing them both to melt into a screaming mass of animated flesh. With 15 seconds left on the countdown, Max carries the wounded Melissa out of the house and it blows up behind them in spectacular fashion. He lays the unconscious Melissa beside his younger self and flees the scene before local authorities arrive. After returning 10 years into the present, Max finds the TEC back to normal and Ricky looking like his former unkempt self. Commander Machuzak was never shot and says that Senator Macomb vanished 10 years ago with nobody seeing him since. Sarah is also still alive and is now employed at the company, though she doesn't remember Max and they just pass each other in the halls with a simple greeting. 
Max returns to his original home which has been rebuilt since the explosion, and is happy to find himself the father of a nine-year-old son and Melissa waiting to greet him. She says that she has something to announce implying that she's pregnant again, so Max says to take her time as he is all of it in the world. And the movie ends.